Welcome back to Statistics Made Easy. In this session, we're going to use Stata to run multivariate analyses. To get started, let's open the do file called multivariate statistics. Remember, you can download all the files and all the data in the video description below. The do file has a very familiar setup as our previous to do files. Don't forget to also watch the data preparation video to uh, get the data set that we're going to use now. And we have our annotations here in green, and I'm going to walk you through the code step by step and also explain what all these different types of code actually mean. As before, I first clear status memory using the clear all command and then set more off so that we do not omit any output. The first new thing you will notice is that we install a command, namely the outrec2 command. And this command is really useful for getting your regression output from the output window in Stata into a file like a Word document or an Excel file. We will need that later on, but I'm already going to install it. And now I can load my data set. First of all, I set the directory using the cd command and then I load the data set here, which is our ice cream data. We are already familiar with this data and our first step will be to run a regression using this data set. In Stata, running a regression is very straightforward. You will need a single command, namely regress, and this command then is followed by your dependent variable, the one variable that you want to predict as an outcome. In my case, I want to predict the ice cream consumption. That is my primary variable of interest using other variables as predictors. And I can specify as many variables as I like, and I can also have all these independent variables in different formats, for example, continuous or just binary variables. In my case, I use income numerical. I can't use any string variables. I need to use numerical value, uh, variables. And then I add another variable, namely the location. Now here is an interesting addition to this variable, an i dot. You may remember that our location variable is a categorical variable, taking the expressions of my ice cream parlor is in the city center or the park or the train station. Now in a regression analysis, a one unit increase always means um, a shift from zero to one, for example, in a binary case, or a one unit more in a continuous variable. But if you have a categorical variable, a one unit increase does not necessarily make any sense. For example, it could be a shift from having cats or dogs or moving from the park to the city center. So therefore, we need to convert those categorical variables into binary variables first, where a one represents a yes for Yes, this is, for example, the city center and a zero otherwise. We could use the binary variables we already created in our data preparation. We have a binary variable for a city center, for example, and for the park and the train station. But we can also um, use a trick by putting an I dot in front of a categorical variable. In this case, the categorical variable is automatically converted into several binary variables by Stata. So if I run this command, I now get this output here where we see um, the coefficient, the standard error, and the p-value for the influence of income on the ice cream consumption. So here the coefficient is negative, indicating a negative relationship, and uh, the p-value is relatively high or close to one even, meaning that this is a not statistically significant relationship. For more information on how to interpret these regression outputs, please check our corresponding video on interpreting statistical outputs. In addition, we can also get some post-estimation results, so things that Stata estimates in the background. And I can get all the additional information that are being computed alongside the regression output I see using the e-return list command. For example, I get the number of observations here, the degrees of freedom, that's the second row. I also get the R squared value, for example, the log likelihood. All of these are important indicators for the goodness of fit of my model. 
So all of these I may want to retrieve later on for my regression output. So we'll keep that in mind for now. And specifically what we're going to do is that we store certain outputs that we need later on, namely the AIC and BIC, which are also indicators for the goodness of fit of my model. I'm going to use those as examples. So first of all, I use the uh, estatic command, which computes the AIC and BIC. And then I put those into a matrix. I create a new matrix and um, then put the values that I obtain from my estatic command into this matrix. So basically what I'm doing, I'm now storing the information from this AIC and BIC computation in local macros. We already learned about macros in our earlier session. And then we can call these macros again when I use the output for my regression. And the output is here created using the outrec2 command that I installed earlier. Outrec2 saves the regression results in an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document. We're going to use a Word document here called icecream.doc. And I use the replace option so that in case the document already exists, it is overwritten. And then I can add a few options. For example, the adds option allows me to add the AIC and BIC values that I stored in my local macros with the same name up here in those uh, previous rows. I can also uh, store the log likelihood, which is automatically stored by Stata after the regression. Then I say I do not want the output to uh, contain the constant, for example. I specify that all the coefficients and all the values should have two decimal points, and I also add at the bottom uh, the significant cutoff levels that I defined here, also with asterisks. And then I label my models. For example, the first model should have the column name model one. And I can also add a title to the whole document, well, as regression results, for example, and then add a note if I like, for, for example, containing the number of observations. Now, since we stored some of these values as locals, it's important that I execute all these commands in one row because data will otherwise forget the local macros. So I run these commands again, and now I have a new document in my folder, in my working directory, that contains these results. For example, I now have this table with all the specifications I uh, used earlier, and I see here that monthly income has a coefficient close to zero or zero, um, uh, related to the ice cream consumption. So the dependent variable is not shown and I would usually add that perhaps to the table title so that it's clear that you're predicting ice cream consumption but you see all the independent variable in this regression output. Alongside the goodness of fit uh, statistics like the R squared, the AIC, BIC and the log likelihood. And at the bottom you also have the number of observation used in this regression. Now, next we uh, also add our other variables like our main explanatory variables because in our first model we only used the control variables. So I'm going to extend my regression command. In this case I have now temperature, child, income numerical and the location. So all of these are important variables and the rest of the command is basically the same. I again compute the AIC and BIC and then use the outrec command to output this model into my doc Word document. The only difference is that I use the append option rather than replace, which tells the command that it should add a new column next to the already existing model one. And it should also use the label model two for my second column. If I run this command, I then get a new file. The old one is updated. And in this new ice cream document, I now have a second model which contains the relevant variables of 
interest. So this is an important uh, way to get my regression results from Stata into an external file so that I don't need to do all the formatting by hand, but I can let Stata do a lot of the work for me. So thank you very much for watching this first episode on multivariate statistics, and I look forward to seeing you in our next session.